first five years of all of our lives are actually the most um, fundamental years of our lives. They are essential to who we are for the rest of our lives. So if we spent the first five years of growing, we would spend the next 95 years continuing to grow, right? That's what you would assume. Um, most of our personality and self-image are developed in these first five years. During our essential formative years, many things change. Our bodies grow, our brains develop, we mature and form our own thoughts and opinions. But our inner child never leaves us. Essentially from the moment we're born, we're encouraged to keep growing up. I can remember being told things like, act your age. But at what point do we reach a plateau? At what point is it time to go back to remembering who we were instead of trying to leave them behind? Today I'm gonna to share with you how embracing our inner child can help, or how embracing our inner child in the way we think, feel, and interact with others can change our lives. But before I do, I want to make sure you all understand what I'm talking about when I speak of your inner child. To do that, I'm going to take you on a journey back to who you were in order to show who you still are. I want all of you to take a moment to think about who your inner child is. So everyone, please, if you would, close your eyes. Take a deep breath and Describe your inner child to yourself. Visualize how they talk, how they look, and what they're doing. Don't deny yourself any of what you start to think or what you start to feel. Just let your mind run. Okay, open your eyes. I'd be willing to bet that for a lot of you, your inner child was smiling or laughing or playing something of that sort. Maybe for some of you though, um, your inner child was experiencing some hardships. Maybe your inner child was alone or sad. Maybe they were scared. Some of you may have even had trouble describing your inner child at all. The key to how you saw your inner child when you closed your eyes come from the experience you had as a child. Your inner child can simply be described as who you were when you were young. But when you look deeper, your inner child is so much more than that. Your inner child is your capacity for innocence, joy, and playfulness. They are why you see things the way you do, your deepest fears and your greatest conquests. As we grow up, we oftentimes allow ourselves to lose our sense of wonder and curiosity with the world. We often think that this is the first necessary step in becoming responsible, serious, and successful. Many would argue that learning is the key to success, but they deny their own curiosity. But they deny their own curiosity. Next time you are having a conversation with a colleague at work or even during this class, let your curiosity come through in that conversation. Ask questions, ask whatever questions come to your mind and don't be afraid of collaboration. Shed the silly fear that asking questions makes you look bad. The possibilities that could come from allowing yourself to embrace creativity are endless. feeling like your inner child. Making changes to the way we live can be a real adjustment, um, especially for making you know, physical changes like changing a habit. But um, when we move towards changing the way we feel, it can really take a lot more out of you and it can be a lot more challenging. Um, if we're being honest, that can also take a lot of courage too. Uh, your inner child is vulnerable. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable like your inner child sounds scary, but the rewards far outweigh the risks. Children trust blindly. They give their trust to others so that they could be trusted in return. They see the best in people and they don't think twice about the fact that they could really be hurt. 
And sure, we might get hurt. But real pain, real emotional pain, is the key to growth. Getting hurt is how we learn about others and ourselves. It's how we become the best at what we do. Like they always say, no pain, no gain. Finally, interacting with others as our inner child. I'm sure many of you could pick out a memory of when a child came up to you and said something really, really brutally honest. <laughs> Sometimes hilarity ensues. It's hilarious, we're all laughing, it's super fun, but sometimes we kind of get our feelings hurt a little bit. Um, kids see things the way that they are. They have no other outside influences or pressures that influence their perceptions on things. Likewise, our inner child is free from the pressures of needing to succeed or fit in. They just are who they are. What would happen if we shed the stresses of social acceptance and just embrace who we really are as adults right now? So to close, I can assure you all that your inner child is the best version of yourself. They see the world with wide eyes, ready to take on whatever life throws at them. They're curious and collaborative, vulnerable and trusting, and overall brutally honest. Each of us has an inner child who carries us through life every day. I encourage you to embrace your inner child. Take them with you through life. Let your inner child bring you to your best life. Essentially, I am calling you all to stop acting your age. We all know you're tired of it. 